never seen it before. You know, and, and it's gotten life has gotten better with with the confession to her. Yep. Yep. And that's the thing. Uh, to, I almost said piggyback, Joey. Uh, <laughs> that's a, that's the thing that to kind of build off on as well. And we we talked about this in church fairly recently as well. Is that confession to to you know Jesus and, and to God and that's important. But you you also should go and confess whatever that sin that you committed against another person. You should go and talk to that person, ask them for their forgiveness as well. Uh, that that's a part of it. And whether they give you that forgiveness or not, that 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 part is on them. But you should go and ask for it and let them know, like, hey, I'm I am truly and earnestly sorry for the the pain or the um, you know offensiveness or whatever it may be I'm sorry that I put that on you uh, and, and like I said it's up to them whether they forgive you or not obviously uh, and that, that their forgiveness is between the, them and God if they choose not to that, that uh, is correct but but that, that like I said you, you should be doing that so if you guys want to move on we'll go on to verse 9 here um, mm -hmm. it says did the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. So here, God is giving Jeremiah his purpose. He, he's already broken down here as Jeremiah was basically objecting, saying that I'm, you know, I'm not mature enough to grasp this knowledge and to witness it to everyone else in this world. God's saying right here, I'm doing it for you. And he's... He is, uh, I'm looking for the word, looking for the word, um, reassuring him that he's given him the words here. Um, if, if we lived our life in Christ daily, that should be a reassurance to us as well. That we should get up every morning and pray to God, thank him for another day for us, and know that God is going to give us the word as soon as somebody gets in front of us that we need to witness to it. Yeah. And you know, uh, there, there's so many different uh, passages in this Bible, and just there's a, there's a song by Casting Crowns. I'm sure most of us have heard it. And if you haven't heard it, for those people listening, go look it up. The name of the song is Nobody. Mm. Um, but there's so many times in the Bible, and I'm gonna use the, the examples that song uses because they're, they're fresh on my mind, uh, where God says, "Look, like." Don't worry about what your shortcomings are. I'm, I'm going to make it where you can do whatever I need you to do. Right. And for example, let's be honest, Moses had a speech in him. Yes, he did. And he was he prophesied to a nation. Uh, he also had stage fright on top of it. I, actually, actually, I'm going to clarify that story for you. He went to, he went to God and he told God that he, he didn't talk good and Joey's right that he had stage right, stage fright, and God told him that's fine. I'm gonna lift your brother Aaron up. You talk to Aaron. Aaron will talk to the people. Okay, okay. Well, my my mistake. But on another note, just to emphasize this point again, uh, you know, uh, was how does it, uh, how's the song where David brought a rock to a sword fight? Yep, that yeah. is correct. And I mean, there, there again, don't, don't worry about what you have or what you don't have. I'll, I, you know, the God will give you what you need at, when you need it. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. That, that is 100% correct. That if you will simply stand where God says to stand and have faith that you're going to be fine standing right there where God says to stand, then he will do what he says he will do. He won't leave you just standing there. And I think all four of us now are living proof of that. Agreed. I would agree to that. I agree. Just don't be like that squirrel and be like, ooh, something shiny. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. And it, that, that's kind of the way I lived most of my life. I mean, I could walk up to David and we're talking about God, and all of a sudden, you know, hey, hold on, let me check the Brave score or something like that. There's always something that's going to kiss you on the side to get your attention to throw you off of it. Yep. 
Because Satan knows your every move. He knows everything yep. that you love. Um, he, he'll also just get you to the point where he'll let you know at the same time you're the only one that's got that problem too. That's how he gets you further away from God. Yep. Once he gets you alone, he's like, hey, you know, I, I know what you like. Let me get you away from this for a minute. And then while I got you there, let me throw you in this pit that I'm already in. And he says, you're the only person in this world with this problem. And now you've gotten away from everybody else. You don't want to talk to them. You, you start feeling sorry for yourself. You start living in guilt from it. And at the time, you're so focused on what's going on so bad in your life that you you tend to forget that God's still standing there the whole time. He's right there where you left him. Uncle Joel says that perfectly every time he says it. But yes, he does. He's right there where you left him. Only thing you had to do was just turn back around, put the eyes back on God, and Satan's going to be like, yeah, what fight do I have now? Let, let me tell y'all something I used to be envious of. And this is on topic, but a little bit off topic. But it's it still fits. I used to wonder about people just like Ted Turner. Ted Turner is an open devout atheist he <laughs> he believes in if you listen to him he's talked about he thinks certain part of the world ought to be uh cannibalized uh and eat their children because they can't support them so at least they'll have something to eat i mean this man is gone he is mm -hmm. shot all right well i have i have talked i prayed and talked to god and i'm like why do you bless somebody like that? Why Why is he such... Just everything he touches turns to gold. I'm going to tell you, it took God a long time to beat the answer into my head. But this is what God said. He allows people like Ted Turner, like Bill Gates, like uh, the guy that owns Amazon, um, Bezos. He yep. lets those people have their fortune, as much money as they want to make. If they love money that much, then he will open the floodgates and let them make it. Because once they take their last breath, that fortune's over with. It's done for. They are done. They have created the bed that they're going to lie in. And for the rest of us, he don't guarantee us riches and fortunes. He asked us to trust in him that he will provide our needs. That's right. There you and, go. And, uh, I can't remember exactly where because I'm not well versed enough. But I do believe, uh, well, I don't believe I know. Jesus said that it, it, uh, it's hard for a rich man to get into heaven. Or how hard yeah. is it for a rich man? I think that's our choice. Yeah, it's it'll not, be not easier. One. It says not one rich man to enter the gates of heaven. It's easier to put a camel through an eye of a needle. Eye of a needle. Yeah, that's it. And you know what's funny is uh, I can't think of the name of the country music song right now. Uh, it's something like Buy Me a Boat. I think it's the name of the song. Yeah, Chris yep. Jansen. Uh, and, and I listened to that song. I can't tell you how many times uh, before I ever even realized that, you know, I, in that song it said can't fit the uh, camel through the eye of a needle. I not one time ever got that was a biblical reference. I thought it was just an old adage, to be honest. No, nope, yeah. that's Bible reference. Yeah. Once again, that's showing my ignorance. ignorance. Joey, off topic, but we have got this right here down to a science. <laughs> <laughs> have you been paying attention to that? Yeah, um, if anybody's watching Twitch, you're going to notice that I'm coming up on a tractor every time I turn around. I and mean, I mean, ain't, it's, ain't neither one of us cracking the throttle. It's nope. just that perfect timing. <laughs> and we 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 are running in opposite directions. Yeah, I'm running north and south. He's running east and west. And our turnaround point is the same spot. And we are getting there in perfect timing. <laughs> Sorry, that I didn't, I didn't mean to. Square field. <laughs> it is. Uh, uh. Sorry, I didn't mean to get off. <laughs> no, All right. right. <laughs> so now, now I want now I want to play the game. I'm telling you, we need to get you a PC oh, and get you in here. Oh, you'd love it, man. You'd love this. Matter of fact, there comes a tractor up on me now. Yeah, that's the old eighty nine seventy, eighty nine sixty. It's like a washed I played it, David, and if 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 you like tractors, it's a great game. Yeah. 
I, well, I, I haven't never really, I mean, I'm, I've never really been a attractive person, to be honest with you. I know how to die with everything, but I have never really. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're going to get to verse I'm, 10. I'm just, I'm just a tree slayer. <laughs> Communist. We're going to get to verse 10 here, and I'll be honest with you, I kind of saved this one because I, I was eager to hear what not only Bill had to say, but I'm, I'm glad Bus, you and David joined us. I really am because this is turning out to be awesome. I, I feel it is. Um, I kind of want to hear y'all's take on this. But um, in verse 10 it says, Then the Lord put forth his hand and took...